Our next speaker today is Dr. Berth Gall, and she is here today to talk to us about how to lead in times of digital transformation. Berth, who was originally an economist and a political scientist, built up the Berlin School of Digital Business, whose lectures have taught executives from major well-known German and multinational organizations the necessary digital skills for the transformation process. She has founded and developed, developed various digital projects, and her aim is to prepare and inspire managers and employees to shape and lead the digital transformation within their own companies. She's the author of a book, Digital Leadership, which was published in autumn 2017. And her fun fact is, she wants to raise awareness for climate crisis and has decided to raise this awareness by traveling the distances that we normally cover by plane on foot. And she's going to cross the Alps this summer on foot. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bergdahl. Thank you. And uh, I would like to join the group of people thanking Chitra for inviting us and for setting up this event. I'm very pleased to be here. And yes, I was given the task to tell you a little bit more about how to lead in times of digital transformation. Digitalization is here to stay, fortunately. Most of you work in this area. We have a lot of companies that have to deal with it. Some are very eager to do that. And some of them are a little puzzled. So they don't know how to really manage that. And I'll just switch it one back. Okay, I'll leave it there. Um, and so, I don't know about you. I am the one that usually um, is very happy and open about the new uh, products that come out there, new, new tools that we can use. I usually set them up, build a big website, and shove it out to my team and say, well, can, can we use that? Shove it out to the, to the customer say, well, use it and, and tell us how we can implement this maybe. This is not uh, basically the process that we see in companies, how they are used to working with it. Um, as, I, as it was said, um, I'm usually invited to uh, the companies and to help them with the digital transformation process. Mostly, most companies have an understanding that digital transformation is about technology. So they know there is tools that they can use to improve their internal processes, there is tools that they can use um, to increase their value chain. They know that there is tools and the uh, digital process can help them even um, change their business models. And nowadays, they're realizing, they're beginning to realize that working with all of that, the transformation process of the company has to speed up. They need to change the system. The transformation, digital transformation process does not work in the running system. So usually when companies come up to me, they say, please help our leadership team, our executives, to understand how they should change their leadership style to help those teams, those innovation teams, and maybe the teams that are using agile uh, forms of working to succeed, because they have to work within the old forms, the old systems, using a new system which does not match. And usually um, the leaders, the, the executives, do not have a clue what needs to be changed in the leadership style to make these teams successful. So what usually happens, and in this specific case happened again, a large, very renowned, world renowned German company asked me to help their leadership, their executives, to understand what they needed to change in their leadership style in order to make these teams, these agile working teams, successful. And I talked to them and they set up the planning and the program and they said, well, we have these agile working teams already. And I said, great. So let's invite them. Let's invite people that are working in an agile setting and help them come in and, and help the, the executives understand how they need to change their leadership. I looked into very afraid eyes. The person that I was talking to said, stop. We have to think about this very carefully. The person that we will bring in will talk about things that are not going well, that need to change. We might, might risk this person's 
career opportunities for the future. This left me shocked, really shocked, and it was not the first time that I realized. So I was asked to help these companies to change, and they didn't want to change. They want to be washed without being made wet, basically. So this left me shocked and thinking, and I found myself um, uh, a, weekend, a weekend later with all of my friends from which I knew from university. We had known us by ourselves for quite a long time. There were all kinds of kids in all ages and sizes running around. And I looked at the scenery and said, okay, there is some analogy here. Because I was trying to think of an image, of a picture that I could give these people, these executives, so that they could refer to that when guiding themselves and transforming themselves in this digital transformation process, because that's what they need to do. And I looked at the scenery and I said, it is basically like raising a family. What happens? Usually there is a couple, they move together, they start organizing a household, they agree that both need to bring in money, um, someone needs to take care of the car that needs to be repaired, someone needs to take care of the plumbing, they kind of organize. They set up a running system. Usually it works well. Sometimes it doesn't, but usually it works. Okay. And then they say, okay, how do we basically build our future? Surprise, they come up with the idea to have a baby. And what do they do? They think about all the nice things that will happen, all the happy memories and the harmony that, that will be there, and the weekends and the holidays that they will have. I have not found one that said, oh, Jesus, I don't know if we are going to be able to manage this. Most of them have looked at the positive signs, eager to have this new little baby in their families. What happens then? Everyone knows it. The baby arrives. No sleep, there is illnesses, and I had a scared meeting schedule. Now this baby is ill, so what do we do? What do we do? We keep the old system running anyway. Maybe no one's not known as much as before. Maybe the picture is a little bit messy, but we keep it running. But we make time for this new baby, and it's very clear that it needs time and it has priority. So if there is a flu, we take care of the food. So, no question about that. Fast forward a little bit when the baby is about, has gone through a certain development phase and is now ready to take her off and to be a little bit more autonomous. It starts, it wants to start to walk by itself. What do we do? First of all, we teach it to stand, to keep a balance. We help it to stay, you know, to grab onto a chair. We stand there with our hands, our back hurting, but we stand there because we know it has to learn how to stand. And then we teach it and we help it to walk. So what happens? One step and it falls on it. But what do we do? Yay, you did it, you did it. I know I believe in you. Please get up again. I will help you do it too three, four steps. That's what we do. It falls back a thousand times. What do we do? We cheer. We say, try it again. We know we believe in you. What do we do? We tell all our, our family and beyond. Now, rewind this situation and look at the same situation from a company perspective. What happens if the company decides, <laughs> set up, it's running, and then it says, we have to do something to be here in the future. Okay, let's have a digital project and a baby. What happens? Most of the people say, okay, it's this department, you take care of it. You report to us, but please, you know, and hopefully it will work. So we set it up, we get the funds and all this, we soon find out. We have not budgeted it well, we need more funds. What do we do in our family? We try to somehow get these funds. In a company, you said you would be okay with this budget, so please don't, don't come ask. I mean, you have to, you have to manage. Basically. Then the project is ill. It has a flu. They come around the corner and say, it has a flu. We need your help now. What do you say? Uh, no, I have a meeting. 
meeting, um, I have to mow the lawn, I have to keep this business running, um, but let me check, I have time in two weeks, uh, we can talk about the flu and I will take care of the flu in two weeks. Would you do this? With a, no. It's a very common situation in companies. So it's postponed. Now, fast forward to the situation when the project, the baby, wants to start walking. What do you do? You invite all the people, say, here's our project, it will start walking. We made it walk. What does everyone expect? A marathon runner, st standing up, running, by the way. What do they see? A project that works fairly well. Sometimes trips over, falls on, it, on its butt. First time you see this, a third of the company goes and says, no, this is never, ever going to work. No. Some of them say, okay, we'll give it, give it, give it a uh, second chance. Let's talk. Works, fourth, second. Okay, second, third of the company says, this will never, ever work. Stop it. Just, you know, we'll have a funeral for it, but we will not put any more money into this project. Why is this so dangerous and even toxic? What happens when children, or what is the, um, the development basically when children grow up, grow up? First, they start, they learn to move, then they speak, and then, it's only then that we can see and perceive the talent that lies within this child. We cannot see it when it's still stumbling and trying to get on their, on their feet. But in companies, usually we don't give it time to develop that talent. What would have become of YouTube? Go on YouTube. It's the second largest search engine. It started out as a dating platform. They used keywords. You didn't upload pictures, but videos. Company was running out of money, and what did they do? They did not draw their executive team go somewhere in a room and try to find a solution, what did they do? They drew the whole company together and said, we have a situation here, we need your help. We have enough brain power here and we have to come up with a solution. So they went into the data, crunched the data, looked at the usage of the system and they came and said, okay, people don't like the dating app, but they're really into sharing videos. So let's take out this see what we can do with it. What happened? The same situation, their business model went down the drain, basically. They were, they had a monthly subscription fee business model went down the drain. They didn't have a clue how to make money, how to monetize this. What is it today? We all know it, we all lose it. This is basically um, the perseverance that we are missing in a lot of companies today. Um, that is a leadership task. And here we have, we come back to the setting basically of this conference is women and men can take what they have experienced and what is very, very clear for them when raising a family and running a family, they need to take that and use it and make it work in, within the company. That's basically it. So if you are in charge of running a company and bringing it through a digital transformation process, finding maybe new business models in the digital world. What do you need to do? Foster experiments and allow the projects to fail. The child would never learn to walk if it would not fail a hundred thousand times by falling back on its butt. You have to manage those systems at the same time. You have to keep the one system running and make adoptions to that. That means that, and, and uh, Petra has, has uh, mentioned it this morning, you have to delegate, foster self-management, trust people, and give them the room so that they can really make the uh, company successful in their um, heritage um, uh, branch, basically. And you have to manage this new world, which is new for you. It's it plays by completely different rules. You need to set up a playroom, a sandbox, 
they speak a different language and you need to make clear and you need to communicate to both parts why they are important and why they are allowed to play by different rules and, and make that clear. So communication is, is, is key. And you have to build, uh, you have to help build networks. It has been mentioned a lot here too, because only by giving away some of the tasks that we were doing before by outsourcing them, by using new tech, uh, digital technologies to support all the, the tasks that we had uh, been doing, will we be able to manage those systems because usually we do not have more time and people to do that. But we also have to think about um, the overflow of information and communication that we have. So. As a leader, as an executive, you have to take care that the people that you have, that have to be productive and come up with new ideas, to draw them out of the process, to give them deep work sessions where they can go to and work very productive and, and, and concentrated for a while, for a time, keeping, taking them out of communication, of meetings, and of a boss that's coming in or, or once in a while. Um, and you have to build psychologically safe environments, and that's basically Amy Edmondson. That does not mean that it's only that you have to make to, to, to build a, an environment where people feel comfortable to speak up. It's more. A picture to relate to, if you have a family with a toddler coming into a house and there is a staircase going down to the basement, it's clear that everyone will jump up and say, there is a dangerous situation, we have to take care of that. So, because everyone knows, if I'm not addressing this, there might be a very severe situation. And so, a psychological safe environment is you have to build an environment where people are afraid not to speak up. Because they know that if they do not point to something that is going wrong, the consequences will even be worse. And that is not an easy task. It sounds a lot easier than it is, but that's, if you look, looking at uh, companies that have um, successfully managed the transformation, that's what they have really watched um, closely. You have to manage both systems. I, uh, I, I, I said that um, you have to build the space and you have to hold that space. There will be a lot of pressure on the executives, but that's your task to hold that space. And in the whole process, don't forget to enjoy the emotional and funny um, aspects of this whole process too. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the expression that companies want to get washed without getting wet. So did everybody kind of sit up and listen to that one? And it's very true. It's by how it's human nature. We, we want something, but we don't necessarily want to sometimes put the hard work and the commitment in that's required for success. Um, I also enjoyed that how you drew some analogies from being uh, a parent and having a baby. <laughs> Uh, into the business, but it is, it's true that uh, it's like in, in having children, you, you need to, you know, to, I wrote down, to start a project, to focus, to support it, and then to launch it. And that is the same, I suppose, when you are, uh, when you are wearing children, but in, in a business point of view, if you don't keep an eye on it every single moment and nurture it and really, really want its success and focus all of the time, um, that can lead to failure. But with regards to failure, you also mentioned not to be afraid to fail. And actually one of our speakers in the afternoon, Jenny McGinn, is going to speak about business failure, the personal business failure that she had and how it drove her on to be even more successful in her new business today. So I'm going to throw um, the microphone out to any questions that are in the room. Charlie, I think I saw your hand going up in the air. Hi. Uh, can be said to be a fault of, 
of ignoring the flu in the business because you've got to get on and run the business and, and you know, those are the annoying things that need your attention all the time. But I would say the only difference is obviously in a business you're expecting return on your investment and that's got to come quickly. With a child, that return probably may never come, but emotionally they're giving you something back, which in a business situation you don't get. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges is the speed and returns. Yes, and there is uh, something, and we stop the analogy right here, because you have to be able to kill projects. <laughs> so, this is the way Yes, you know when, uh, you have to know when to quit and when to, to uh, pull the plug. That's true, yeah. Chetra. Thank you very much for your speech. Um, leading digital transformations now, would you, uh, do you see a difference between a, a female leading those teams within a company or males leading these teams? Do you have any um, uh, numbers on that? Uh, I don't see, uh, as much as I would uh, be able to, to give numbers because usually, especially in, in, in Germany, most of the uh, change is led by men because they're in the leadership. Uh, positions, there are probably differences, and I think it's just uh, the, the main point is in the characteristics, and you can't say one is better than the other. There's a, a lot of ways of doing it right. There's always definitely ways of doing it wrong, but a number of, of ways of doing it right, and I think it's, it's the correct, uh, characteristic of each person. But it goes back to not enough. Uh, I, I know, despite Angela Merkel being an amazing um, chancellor for Germany, uh, within the uh, corporate world, I, I have heard, and that was when we met last time uh, in a conference in Germany, that uh, you know, female leadership is, is not promoted as much. So, yeah. well, we'll have to wait for the numbers in Germany when there are enough female leaders to, yeah. to compare. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Is there another question? Um, a bit more than uh, uh, I would like to ask um, is junior uh, management uh, keener on transforming? Digital of modern senior. It's interesting. It does not has nothing to do with the age. And we see a number of we. I mean, my 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 best innovation manager. She was over way over fifty years old. And she each weekend I, I, I went back to work and I said, Oh God, she she, she come up she came up with something else. And then now we need, you know we need to try it out. So and and we have um, younger people being very reluctant. What we can see is um, we can learn a little bit from the startups, um, looking at them because they are building up their, their business and they're constantly um, rethinking about processes. They're not, they, they, they don't come in and say, okay, this process is, is, is built in, in concrete, but they're constantly rethinking that. And that's um, basically um, a, a mindset that we need to create, but you can create it in, in, in any age. Play the question on the front. When you were saving the baby from falling down the stairs, it wasn't a mother more concerned. It was just a parental approach to safety. The goal was to not let the baby fall down the stairs. In companies that are becoming more diverse, gender diverse, ethnic diverse, culturally diverse, um, identity diverse, do we still maintain fundamental similar goals? How do we maintain that? Um, as we welcome in more female leadership, um, among other diversities, do we still have that same goal of saving the baby? Is there a fundamental unity in our approach? I, uh, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, um, I think um, I, I was trying basically even to, to, to build a broader scope because it's not only the parents but everyone else Try, in the company, if they see something going wrong, they, they address it, and, and basically you're very successful if you if you build that kind of, of company. I mean, I think um, basically we have to teach everyone to to, to you know to look at uh, the, the issues and to raise them. And I think um, what we see this is this might be a very German uh, problem, but we are not very good at um, uh, communicating um, in conflict. So we're very direct, and we need to basically work on communication skills that basically that are more supportive. And in other companies, you need to, to raise awareness that you, you are able to, to um, address things that might be a little bit 
difficult. So um, I think um, um, basically giving everyone a better understanding to manage, to, to communicate and to manage conflict will, will um, hopefully foster that situation. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you.